world where instant satisfaction often overshadows intentional connection, insight into the art of patiently waiting for the right partner is invaluable while navigating complexities of modern dating. With a profound understanding of dynamics of relationships and a commitment to fostering healthy connections, our speaker will shed light on the importance of self-awareness, discernment, and respect in the pursuit of fulfilling romantic relationships. Our speaker today, Lucy Gaki, is a passionate, inspiring individual dedicated to serving her community, particularly focusing on youth and women empowerment. Her passion for youth and women ministry is evident through her initiatives, including starting an organization to sponsor needy students in high school relationship status. attended Egerton University and graduated with a degree in Agricultural Education and Extension. She also has a master's degree in Agricultural and Rural Development from Kenya Methodist University, Kemu. Currently, she is pursuing a second master's degree in education psychology at the Raqqa University, a high diploma in guidance and counseling, a diploma in education management. Gaki is the current chairperson in the Church Generational Impact Nkobo, as well as in the advisory team for Youth and Women Ministry. Lucy Gaki is the deputy principal at Kiria Secondary School in Meru, where she teaches biology and agriculture. She is married to Stephen Kimathi and blessed with three daughters who are all graduates and father has adopted many sons and daughters. Madam Lucy Gaki will be exposing on the topic waiting and dating. Let us put our hands together as we welcome our speaker today. You may have it in those students' biology in high school. That's why the teacher is teaching the topic of introduction. Students will always want to drift you away from the topic and they want to ask issues concerning relationships. <laughs> so it is not a new topic for me, and I always um, have issues about it. Now, uh, our topic is on dating and waiting. So what is dating? We want to first of all define the dating. Because we may think we know what it is when we talk about dating, and um, we may not be you may not be clear about it. So what is dating? Dating is a stage of a, a romantic relationship where two individuals, two individuals, and when I talk about two individuals here, I am very specific. The two individuals I'm talking about are heterosexual individuals. I am talking of heterosexual individuals because uh, with the modern society, Things have changed. I may really talk about it as, uh, two individuals and then uh, maybe we are talking of a male and a male or a female and a female. But in this case, because we are uh, working from the Christian point of view, we are talking about two heterosexual individuals, a male and a female. What does it mean? That is the Christian point of view of dating. So we are not talking about the, the perverted point of view. So where two individuals, heterosexuals, engage in an activity together, most often with the intention of evaluating each other's suitability as a partner. It is a period of a romantic relationship where two individuals who are heterosexual, is a male and female, uh, engage uh, in an activity 
whereby they want to evaluate one another and see is this person, can this person qualify to be my partner in the future? So, uh, dating is just a, a kind of an evaluation, a test that is uh, taking place between these two partners so that maybe in the future, if they see the qualities that they want in this individual, then they can make up their, their mind. Maybe uh, you qualify to be my wife in the future, you qualify to be my husband in the future, in the future. That is the main purpose of uh, dating. And uh, I'm saying it's a form of an assessment. So dating is a kind of a test. You can never pass the test of feelings. That will be So in dating, you will uh, check those qualities, which are some of the qualities that you need to check on the individual, so that at the end of the dating period, you will be able to say, this one, no, 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 I can't go with that in the, next, the rest of my life. Remember, we are talking about this relationship being uh, uh, after the, the, the dating, uh, you move to engagement. Dating is not engagement, you are not engaged to this person, you are only testing them. Then after testing them, you engage the person and then later you get married. Remember, marriage is for, it is permanent. It is only death can uh, do no part. And uh, forget about the profession in the world today where people have diluted the, the importance of the man marriage relationship. And what has all of us to know that marriage relationship is a relationship that is instituted, instituted by God. It is a relationship that started in heaven. It is a relationship that in the beginning of the world, God brought it. So it is not a human relationship. It is not human beings that have brought the marriage relationship. It is only that modernity is the duty, the intentions of the marriage. So we need to have that very clear in our minds. Uh, we have several limits. I will not read all of them, but I'll give you, you read them on your own. Second Corinthians 6, 14 to 18. Second Corinthians uh, 6, 14 to 18. Someone to read for us, that verse. Then James 4, 4. 4, 4. Somebody to read for us 2 Corinthians 6 14. Yeah. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common, or what fellowship and light have with darkness. Uh, then we have we have James 4 4. James 4 4. Uh, You are the trans people, don't you know that friendship in the world means an enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. We will uh, come back to those readings later. Proverbs that one ten eleven. Proverbs that one ten eleven. Then we have First Peter four eight. A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubbish. First Peter 4 8. A husband. Sorry. First Peter 4 8. A man who have each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Uh, we have other readings for Russian 3 19. Ephesians. 413. Ephesians 413. Uh, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to give a life worthy of the calling you have received. Now we have all those read, uh, readings. You will get them, you will get back to them later. And um, we will uh, check on what they are thinking about what you are talking about here. Before we we move on, because we have done what for today's yes, uh, we have done this exchange of uh, assessment to 
to check on whether the person you are assessing will qualify to be your life partner. I want us to mention the stages, um, the stages before dating. The stages before dating. Before you start dating, proper dating now, we have several stages. The first stage is what we call the awkward stage. Awkward stage. And this is the stage uh, of nervousness whereby people meet, like for example, you come and meet with someone in campus, just meeting, you are nervous, you don't know whether this person has liked you, uh, they have not liked you, you don't know, and it is a very uncomfortable stage. So the first stage of dating is awkward stage, and we are saying it is a stage of nervousness, whereby two people will meet, a lady and a gentleman will meet maybe on the street of the campus, and you are like, I, I think I like the lady, I think I like the boy, the, 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 the man. And then, after that, all of you are nervous. You don't know whether they have liked you or not. You are not sure. So, uh, for you to move out of this stage, because the, nervous, uh, the nervousness may, may make you not to be comfortable with one another, the next thing that you need to do is uh, do more dating, move to the next stage. The next stage which we are calling attraction stage. So the first one is uh, awkward stage, uh, the stage of nervousness. Uh, you're not sure that this guy has liked you, whether this lady has liked you. You have very many questions you're asking. So we move to the next stage, which is uh, attraction stage. We also call it golden stage. We also call it golden stage. And um, at this stage, you recognize some good qualities in the person. You start admiring the person, and uh, you think that uh, this person can make a good friend. Uh, you know, if you continue advancing, you continue advancing in this stage because it's a very crucial stage because this is where you start admiring the person. You are simply falling in love. You want, you're almost falling uh, for the person because you have admired some qualities in them. We also call it animal stage. It's also known as animal stage. Uh, we are calling it animal stage because uh, at this phase, um, everything looks beautiful. Because you have already fallen out of the person, and uh, that's why you call it the animal stage, the animal phase. But uh, you must get out of the honeymoon phase because at this phase um, you may make some mistake if you commit yourself to that person because you need to get deeper and know more details about this particular person. Um, at this stage also, we are saying you must get out of it because um, you are you, you don't have the feeling of stability. You, you, you are not you don't have the feeling of stability. You are not very uh, stable in the mind because uh, it is the first time. It is the second stage whereby you you feel this person is an angel. This is the stage where, like in the case of parents, if you go to their parents and tell them uh, this is my friend. And the parents tell you, no, child, look at me. I want to get a little bit of a little bit of a little bit You may even follow with your family because you are not stable. The mind is not stable. You are like, you know, that's the only way you understand me and you are better. So it is a stage that you need to take time because uh, you are not very stable. And um, you need to get out of this stage. And we, we, we say that uh, you need to fall out of love so that you are able to look at this person properly. You look at the person uh, critically so that you are able to see all the qualities that need to be seen. At the honeymoon stage, you may not see any weakness in this individual. And all of us, because we are human, there is no perfect human being at all, at all. All of us. You have your weaknesses, I have my weaknesses, everyone has a weakness. But
But what we do in this life is that we learn to live with each other's weaknesses. But remember, there's some things you can't put a bit to be a too natural. So come up with a little character. We will come to questions that you should ask this person in another stage. We will look at them. So all that, as you get committed to this person, then you have made up your mind that despite this one level of I can cope. One has to One has to Yes, the next stage is what you call the uncertainty stage. That is the next stage. The uncertainty stage uh, is the stage where you are not sure about the relationship. You have already left the, the avenue to change. And both of you are scared. Both of the partners are scared. You doubt, you start doubting. Do I really love this person? Do I really love this person? Now you are already out of the animal. That's why we are saying, at the stage of animal, do not commit yourself. Allow yourself time to move to the next stage, which we are calling the uncertainty stage. At the uncertainty stage, uh, you need to ask several questions because at this stage, that is when you will know whether the two individuals are compatible. This is where you check and see whether you are compatible. Some of the questions that you need to ask at the uncertainty stage include one, you ask your partner what they want out of, out of the relationship. Because now we are relating. What is our interest? What do we want? Are we relating for the sake of the relationship? Where is this relationship taking us? Ask your partner what they want out of the relationship. Then you need to ask them their values. You ask your partner their values and how they want to live their life. Now when you talk about values here, yeah, uh, we are saying that um, do they value things like integrity? Do they value things like faithfulness? Do they value things like respect? Those are the values. If you are getting engaged or you want to, go, to start dating a person who does not value faithfulness, prepare yourself to for a heartbreak. <laughs> That's why we are saying, uh, ask your partner their values. Do they believe in being faithful to one partner? Do you believe in integrity? Do you believe in respect? No. If you find out that your values and their values are not correlating, kindly forget about them. If you find out that the values are okay, your values and their values are okay, then the relationship can move to the next stage. But in this, at this stage, you must be very clear. Uh, are our values alike? If the values are not alike, and there is a value in your partner that you don't like, then you prepare yourself for a hard relationship, a relationship that will give you a lot of difficulties. And all of us, I believe, we, 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 we don't want a relationship that will give us any of the time. We want a smooth relationship. So that question must be answered. Um, then ask them how they want to live their life. As a Christian, you must be very clear. How do you want to live your life? Maybe one of you wants to live their life in full service of the ministry. The other one is not interested. You must agree. You must agree. Remember we are saying this is a romantic relationship that will lead to a permanent relationship in the future. So ensure that uh, you find out what each other is interested in the relationship in the future. Then you also need to ask how they want the relationship to be in the future. Do you want it to end up in marriage in a relationship? Or you just want to go to today's and uh, you, you just want it to go but anyway, it's for fun, it is for fun again. Yeah. So you must know, is this past person just trying to make just friendship or there's a future in the relationship? Then the body parties have to choose to work on the relationship 
uh, as an effect of the wonderful feelings that you have experienced throughout those stages of, the, of love. So, uh, when you are agreeing, you must be ready to work on the relationship. And I want you to learn that a romantic relationship is like a garden. It's like a garden. A garden whereby in the garden you have to do the weeding, you have to do the planting, you have to do the spray. You know, I'm an agriculture teacher and uh, when I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, using illustrations, I'm, I, I like using the agricultural illustrations, sana sana. So, uh, a romantic relationship, even a marriage, we may not talk about the marriage, but uh, we are saying this relationship as an intention of ending there. Even a marriage, it is like a garden. You must tend your garden. So, this romantic relationship, at this stage, you must tend it, you must work on it, if the relationship has to be smooth. And at this stage, many challenges will crop up. They will crop up, and the advantages are the, sorry, uh, challenges will crop up, and these challenges are an advantage because you bring the couple who manage them closer together because it teaches the two of you that you can get through the tough times together and it trust in each other through communication. So at this stage of uh, uncertainty, many challenges will grow up, many of them. And if you are able to overcome these challenges at the uncertainty stage, then we are saying you are going to go to the next stage. Now, these challenges will be like, for, uh, for example, this challenge is that you are not a man. That's the challenge. You are not a man. You are not a man. You are not a man. That's a guy. I saw him with another girl at KB. And you are not a man. 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 So, that's a challenge. It is up to you to find out and know whether it is true. And we are saying these challenges, these challenges, if you are able to overcome them at this stage, then it means that the relationship will move to the next stage because through communication, you know, uh, if you are told you are friends, and the particular can be a you feel to find out the proper communication. Communication at this stage is very important. You don't work with rumors. You don't work with ERCs. You are able to communicate 
and you enjoy the relationship. Remember, we are, we are teaching about this because it is normal that we need this relationship. It is normal for us to have this relationship and it is very, very important. Now, at this stage again, one can differentiate between a healthy relationship and a, a, a healthy one. Uh, the, in, a, in a healthy relationship, you overcome the challenges and you move on. When the relationship is unhealthy, you feel alone due to lack of communication. So at this, at this stage, you are able to tell whether this relationship will go far or not. At this uncertainty stage, you can always tell where you are heading to. You can differentiate between a healthy relationship and an unhealthy one. Uh, a healthy one, this is where you are able to sort out the problem. Yes, we are doing a KV and it's an amigine. You find out it is an amigan and I support my brother. And I support him in an attack one. Ama, in a support, we are not doing something that is uh, against our relationship. And I support this is Sayako. You get what I'm saying? Yes, you have to find out clearly who was this other person that your friend was found with. And then, all of us, we need to communicate properly. Because sometimes, you may ask the lady, you know, in your journalist, I can't get your hair, I don't know what you're doing. Now, are we communicating really? There's no communication. We need to have proper communication. Communicate freely and truly and correctly to your partner so that you are able to overcome the challenge. Because we are saying, if you are able to communicate, then your relationship will move to the next level. And we are saying if the relationship is not healthy, then uh, there will be a feeling of loneliness. You will feel alone. You will feel alone and you are not able to communicate. Anytime you see in a relationship, there is no communication. That relationship is very unhealthy, it is not going anywhere. Anytime you find out that uh, you are feeling alone, you are feeling the other partner is not with you, that is an unhealthy relationship. The fourth stage, the fourth stage of this relationship, um, the fourth stage is what we call the intimacy stage. Intimacy stage. Now when I talk about intimacy, don't mistake. Don't mistake intimacy stage. That it is the stage when you get intimate with your relationship. No, with your partner. The intimate uh, stage, this is the stage you can also call proper dating. Deeper 
than just a um, just, uh, friendship. It is now a serious business. At this stage, uh, you realize that you are very, very serious. You really want uh, to do proper things with this person. Uh, it is a level where you are open to one another. You are open to one another at this level. Now, when the relationship has reached this stage, then you move to the next one very fast, very quickly. You don't stick on the intimacy stage. And uh, I, I have said, when I talk about the intimacy, the intimacy stage, it does not mean that this stage you get intimate with one another, no. It is just where you know the deeper details of the other partner. You move to the fairy stage, which is partnership stage. And in partnership stage now, in the partnership stage, um, psychology will say it is the stage whereby uh, you move in together and, and get engaged. But moving in together for Christians, we cannot uh, allow it. We cannot allow that because we expect you as a Christian to do the right thing. Doing the right thing here means we are expecting you to get married in the right way because uh, if you move in now uh, as a Christian, you will not be doing the right thing. So at this stage, at this partnership stage, uh, what you do now, uh, you can get engaged. This is the stage where you engage the other one. Or simply, you decide to get into a long-term relationship. You decide to get into a long-term relationship. Uh, this is where you decide now, I think, the, the man has the right qualities, the woman has the right qualities, we can now become partners for life. That is what we mean, partners for life. And uh, at this stage, you also realize that the two of you are best friends and you are also lovers. Caution, do not get into partnership with someone who is not your friend. If you are to get to the other stage of partnership, kindly cultivate friendship first. If you want to have a happy, a happy family, a happy marriage, the person you marry must first be your friend. That is why we are saying that at this stage, you realize that the two of you are best friends and you are also lovers. Um, you are partners to each other in life and you can spend a lot of time together. So, the other stage is that we started with, uh, apart from the fact that we said there is a lot of nervousness, the other stages are to, uh, you, 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 you are familiarizing yourself with one another and you are creating a bond of friendship. Before you get to the permanent relationship, you have created a bond, you have become friends. The, the, the two, three, and four, you are creating a friendship. So we are saying, because now you are friends, you can move on to the next stage and you can become uh, life partners. Then uh, you can spend time together, you can decide when you are planning for the wedding and all other those things that will follow. And uh, one thing we need to note is that uh, even if we are talking about these things here, they may not be exactly what we are saying, but the stages are those ones because people are different, couples are different. So you may not do exactly like the other person is doing, but uh, you follow that procedure because we are saying every couple is unique. And we may not say the exact time that you reach the partnership stage. We may not say uh, maybe after one year, after two years, it depends on the couple because the individuals are different. We have different personalities. There are people who be able to move through those stages faster than others. So we may not have, we, we can't say one year, two years. There are some, some couples who will tell you we dated for six years. Others will tell you we dated for one year. Others will tell you we dated for six months. Because our personalities are different. Sometimes you may have a relationship with a, with a lot of trouble. Hmm? You have a lot of issues that you are sorting out amongst yourselves. So it may take some time. And it is advisable that do not move to the partnership stage when
when you have brought to sorted out uh, any issue among us to yourselves, do not go to the partnership stage when you have not become friends. We are saying be before you become lovers, before you de decide to become partners for life, ensure that you are friends first. If you make a mistake of committing your life to a person who has not been your friend, you will have a difficult time in marriage. Because uh, maybe you married this person because you know she had a very good shape. Hmm? She had to be right. And it was a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a Now, we are talking about the foundation. 
y hacer que la fundación de la ONU, then no, no limits the happiness that you are going to experience. Now, what is this foundation that we are talking about? The foundation that you build your relationship as a Christian on is the Christian foundation. Every Christian relationship must be built on a strong foundation. The strong foundation that we are talking about here is the Christian foundation. Now, um, the Bible tells us that um, if a house is not built on a good foundation, it will fall. If a storm comes, that house will fall. The same thing with the relationship. If your relationship is not built on strong Christian foundations, it will fall. If you have not built your relationship on godly values, that relationship is going to fall. So let us build our relationship on strong Christian foundations so that we are able uh, to stand the storms of life. Today, life is very demanding. There are so many things. There are so many demands. And if the foundation is not strong, this relationship is not going to overcome those storms that come along the way. So let us ensure that we build a strong foundation. Now, what are these some of the strong foundations that we build on? One, one, obedience to the word of God. Obedience to the word of God. What does the word of God talk about a relationship between two unmarried people? The word of God tells us that we need the young people, you need to keep yourselves pure even as you relate to one another. That means as, as, as uh, the, 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 the couples or as the two of you are relating, you must not engage in sexual impurity. Fornication is a sin. If you build a relationship based on fornication, that relationship will fall. And there are some things that, uh, that uh, when you engage in fornication, that it will not help you. It will bring disagreement because fornication will not sustain your marriage. It will not sustain your relationship rather. So ensure that you build your relationship on the on a, on the word of God. Obey the word of God. If the word of God says that as the two of you relate together, observe purity. It is important to do that because uh, God respects His word. Whatever He says, we need to respect it. If we don't respect the word of God, we are going to get in trouble. And uh, to conclude, to conclude, I want to say that uh, there are some things that I need to mention and say that when you get into a relationship, know that love is a choice. It is you make the choice to love. So love is a choice and it is not just a feeling. Love is a choice. It is not just a feeling. You choose to love your partner every day, even when it is difficult. So if you decide you want to get into a romantic relationship, just know it is a choice you have made. Love is not a feeling. If you think you are feeling like loving them, forget about it. That is not love. Most probably it will be last. But you are saying love is a feeling, it is, it is a choice. And, and you must, when you make that choice, ensure that you love your partner, even when you are not feeling like that. There are some times that you are feeling like not, but you must love them because you made a choice. The other thing is that um, personal wholeness, personal wholeness, is um, a prerequisite for a healthy relationship. Personal wholeness. When I talk about personal wholeness, I am saying you cannot give what you do not have. So, therefore, it is important to work on your own personal growth and development before entering into serious relationship. If you are not whole, if you are not complete, remember, we cheat ourselves that the woman will complete me or the man will complete me. We enter into marriage as two old individuals. So you must be complete, you must develop yourself, 
if you know you have a character trait that is not good, work on it before getting into a relationship. Because uh, if you don't work on yourself, you, you will have a lot of problems. That is when your relationship will uh, have a lot of problems. The other thing you need to note is that um, dating is primarily for building friendship. It is basically, dating is basically for building friendship and the primary purpose of dating is not to find a romantic partner but to build a deep, meaning friendship with someone. This friendship will provide the foundation for a strong, lasting relationship. So when we engage into dating, you are not just dating for the sake. You are not dating just for romance. You are dating so that you are able to build friendship and at the end of the friendship, then you have a permanent relationship. Remember we have said, don't get into partnership stage, which is the final stage of dating, to a person who is not your friend. I'm a CEO of Yako, the Kwa Rashida Fana, who are permanent partners. So ensure that uh, you date for the purposes of uh, making friendship. Then there is no such a thing as a perfect match. We have said that. No people are perfectly compatible and don't spend your time looking for, for someone who is perfect for you. Instead, focus on um, focus on finding someone who is a good fit for you, someone you can love and respect, and who will love and respect you in return. Don't go looking for Mr. Right, Mr. Perfect, or Mrs. Perfect, Mrs. Perfect, rather. You will not find them. They are not here on that. On a map, no. You won't get Mr. Perfect, you won't get Mr. Perfect. But look for an individual who will respect you and you respect them in return. A person that you are compatible with, a person that you can cope with, that is what we are saying. Because uh, perfection, you will not find it here on earth, perfection is only in heaven. And uh, because marriage is not only in heaven, then uh, you have to, to, to use respect and uh, love to get the right partner. So get yeah, that person who can respect you, that person who can love you in return. You love them, they love you, you respect them, they respect you. And the greatest challenge that we have in our society today is the issue of respect. Sana sana on the sign of ladies, ladies allow me to say this, because I am an educator, because I have my money, it is wrong. I am telling you, you need this men You need them. You need them. You need them. You can't do without them. That would be the manicure because I am saying this because I have seen how the society is tending to move towards. Eh? I am earning my money, I can buy my house, I can buy my car. What do I need the money for? We need the men. The relationship of a man and a woman was a, 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 a mind of it. We all know not about it. So let us not pervert the original plan of God. We need one another here yeah, on that. Uh, the other thing I can say about dating as I conclude dating and waiting is that um, God knows your ideal mate. God knows your ideal mate. If you are a Christian, trust God and He has a good plan for your life. And that he knows who you are in your best is, pray that God will guide you in choosing a partner and be patient because you will, you will lead you to the right person in his time. One has heard? Yes, God knows the desires of your heart. As a Christian, go and tell God the desire of your heart. What kind of a partner do I need? I go tell God the kind of partner you want. Pray and tell God. And because God is so faithful, because He's a good father, the Bible tells us that us, earthly fathers and mothers, we do not give good things to our children. If they ask us for bread, we don't give them a stone. If they ask us for fish, we don't give them a snake. What about our Father in heaven, who is a perfect father? What can He give us? That way. Is a good father, he will give us the desires of our hearts. So we are saying as a Christian, God.
God knows our ideal partner. Let us pray and trust Him to give us the right partner. Do not be pressurized by your peers. At was a part of the amount of the day. I think we are going to be living in the body. We are going to be here. You are going to be a pressure. Ensure that you do not give in. You feel the right person at the right time. As I am saying, you should not rush into a relationship. Take your time getting to know someone before you commit to a serious relationship. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Do not be afraid to ask your partner questions and to share your own thoughts and feelings. It is important to make sure that you are both on the same page. You make sure that you ask any question you feel you need to ask. Don't be afraid. And there are some questions at this point that I need you to ask your partner. For example, you may ask them, do you snow at night? <laughs> Before 
you get into the partnership uh, level of this relationship. The other, the other one very quickly is be honest and transparent with each other. Be honest and transparent with each other because honesty and transparency are very, very important. They are very essential for any other relationship. Be honest with your partner about your past, your present, and your future. Don't try to hide anything from them. If you are not honest and transparent to your partner during the dating stage, when you get into the permanent uh, commitment, that's the where you get a permanent uh, commitment, and some things grow up. We have cases where someone and a child, when they were, we have cases, maybe into a new high school, either the lady or the man, you can be either way. Good because you of that statement you say. 
That is what we mean by saying uh, communicate openly and effectively. Be open, be clear, don't leave your jobs to be complete. Uh, and your generation, huh? this generation has been really affected by the SMSs. Now, if I have a message, I have a emoji. You know, the interpretation of that for whatever can be anything. Your partner can interpret anything. So please be clear. Be clear what you meant. Because we have seen people fighting over something that was not meant to be. Then, because the communication was not clear. The other one, be supportive of each other's goals and dreams. Support each other's goals and dreams. Encourage each other to pursue your goal and dream. Be there for each other through thick and thin. Now this one, that is at the partnership stage. When you reach the partnership stage, then you must support one another. Ensure that you are there for each other through thick and thin. Life brings a lot of challenges. There are very many challenges in this life. And if you are not ready to support one another through these challenges, the, the, the relationship can stay break. So, make sure that you are there for each other. Life may bring a lot of battles. Life may bring a lot of issues. But because you are first of all friends, and then you are partners, uh, make sure that you are there for each other and you are able to support one another. Then celebrate each other's successes to make your relationship work well. You are dating to be okay. Celebrate each other's successes and take time. Take the time to celebrate each other's success, both big and small. If you are partner, uh, let your partner, let your partner know how you are proud of them. Let your partner know how you are proud of them. When they are successful, let them know you are really proud of them. Don't be jealous because your partner has become successful. For example, you are clearing for me and your friends. You want to go to the, uh, to the partnership stage, and maybe one of you has a first class owner, and the other one has a second lower. Celebrate your partner who has first class owner. Don't be jealous about it. Don't be annoying. Don't, don't, don't uh, be threatened. In a relationship, don't allow uh, your partner's success to threaten you. If you are threatened by the success of your partner, then the relationship can be separate. If you are not able to celebrate the successes of your partner, there will be a problem. And that's why we are saying in a, partner, in, a, in, a, in a relationship, we complement each other. If you are successful on this side, I will be successful on the other side, and uh, we complement each other. And then, be forgiving, be forgiving. Everyone makes mistakes. Uh, be willing to forgive your partner when they make mistakes, and don't hold grudges. We said, we are not dealing with perfect human beings. We are dealing with human beings who have a lot of problems, a lot of issues. Remember you two people who are dating. You are from two different backgrounds. You, are, you could even be from different ethnic communities in this country. The way we do things in men is not the way things are done in Nyanda. The way things are done in, uh, in Kikuyula is not the way things are done in Kambalan. So, bear that in mind that the two of you can make a mistake because you are from two different ethnic communities. Even, you are, even if you are from the same ethnic community, you are from different families. Maybe in your family, you are taught that the food is eaten in a certain manner. In another family, you are never taught how food is eaten. So, we could have to answer the food is eaten in a certain
teach one another. One is given. That is why we are saying forgive one another for the mistakes that they have done because we are all from different families. The way your parents brought you up is not the way you were brought up. The way she was brought up is not the way you were brought up because we are all different. But when you decide to come together as partners, ensure that you decide how your family or how your friendship should be. Um, then be patient with one another. For you to build a strong and a lasting relationship, it takes time and effort. For you to build a strong and a lasting relationship, it takes time and effort. Therefore, we are saying, be patient with one another, be patient with each other, and also be patient with the process. Be patient with one another, be patient with the process. Anything that is a process takes time. And because dating, which we end up, which will end up to permanent relationship, is a process, you have seen the stages that we have talked about, ensure that you are patient with one another until you reach the end. Then don't be afraid to seek help. If you are struggling in your relationship, then ensure that you seek help from a, a trusted friend or from family or from a counseling department. If you feel that this relationship, you really want it to work, but it is not working, seek help. Don't be afraid of seeking help. It is very important. Maybe it is a small thing you don't know how it's supposed to be done. Seek help from the counselors, from a trusted friend. Tell them what you're going to do and want to overcome that and move on to the next stage. So ask for help. And never give up on each other. Never give up on each other. And no relationship is perfect. And there will be time when your struggles will be done if you commit yourself to work on it. So make sure that um, you don't give up on each other. Because we say, if you move around looking for an angelic woman, for an angelic man, you won't find an angel. You will not find them. You will not find them because they are not there. So all you need to do is bear with one another, sort out the issues where they, they are able to be sorted out. Don't accept the lies that are moving around in the world. The world has a lot of lies. That's squeezy. What are we going to Squeezy. What are we going to What are we going to Marriage is still working. Marriage is still working. Relationships are still working. So let's not allow the enemy to, 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 to lie to us that marriages are not working. Or, uh, or relationships are not working. So let us trust in the Lord and build from the foundation of the Lord. And at the end of it all, I am sure we are going to, to have very, very successful uh, relationships which will end to permanent uh, relationship, relationships. We, we have said that um, we want this relationship to take us up to the last stage. So if we trust in God, we obey His word, and do the right things, we are going to be very, very successful. It is my prayer that God will give us the strength that is needed uh, to be able to achieve a uh, very successful dating. One of the I want chance to pray. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you again this moment. Thank you, Lord, because you have delivered your word to your children. It was their desire, my Father, and our God, to know about the relationship. We also know that, Lord, we are a relational God. That is why you created man that you be able to fellowship with him. Uh, when you did the creation, Lord, you found that it was not good for man to be alone. You created him for a woman to have a relationship with him. Dear Master, this youth, these young people have a desire to have healthy relationships. Dear Lord, I am praying that this morning the Spirit of God shall impart them the wisdom and knowledge to be able to have healthy relationships as they continue in their studies. We have had issues of relationships in the universities where we have seen many children die because of this relationship. Dear Master, we infuse that spirit in the name of Jesus. And let me clear this morning that these students, these children, these young people 
and they continue to with one another, dear Master, you shall give them wisdom that surpasses human understanding, O God, that they shall be able to relate with one another in a healthy manner, that my Father, you shall give them understanding, you shall give them patience, dear Lord, you shall give them the knowledge that is needed, so that they are able to relate with one another. King of glory, give them each a each desire of their hearts. You know what they desire in their hearts, King of kings. And Lord, it tells us that you know the desires of our hearts, and even before we speak them, we are able to meet them. Oh Lord, meet the desire of their hearts this morning. Have mercy on them, O oh Lord. Intervene for this youth, O oh God, and give them victory over every situation in their life. We know you are such a good father, a loving and a kind master, and you shall hear the desires of our hearts. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray.